All right, to all my brothers and sisters in the Lord and to all my friends and family, to all patriots, lovers of righteousness, uh, defenders of the truth, any one of you that uh, approve of and love the Constitution that, that we have that gives us liberties and freedoms that we don't deserve, I, I am speaking to you. We are in a great dilemma and it's getting, the, the news seems to be getting tighter and tighter. The net was cast. Uh, humanity swallowed the, the bait, took it all the way out the other side and we may see the, the line get yanked pretty quick. But I wanna stop by saying praise the Lord today and encourage everyone. It's a wonderful day. There's many times we're up and down and the storms of life hammer us. And uh, many, many seasons that we're involved in, the earth has its continual day-to-day, moment-by-moment season. And uh, summer, sp uh, spring, summer, fall winter and so it goes on and on and there's nothing new under the sun but i wanted to talk to you today about just being on a different level uh a different plane a different walk we're royal children we're kings and priests unto god uh, we're righteousness in christ jesus we are not to be uh, so terrestrial minded uh, the the frequency of the dead is uh, carnal sensual and devilish uh, the trumpet of the gospel is the good news and it raises men back up to uh, to pursue and to endeavor to pursue uh, light. Jesus is the light of the world. God is love to those that are uh, of an understanding mind and heart. He's holy and that's what makes him loving. And we're to follow that. So today in our society, we've got a trouble all around us. It seems as if that the wicked of have uh, come in like that troubled sea casting up mire and dirt and there is no peace saith my God unto the wicked that's the scriptures in Isaiah speak that and and I think other prophets have prophesied that same thing about uh, the the seedbed of unrighteousness and this evil and wicked uh, generation and this family of of, uh, of evil that is right before our very eyes the same doctrine of Cain the same influence of Nimrod to build back the tower of Babel and to dethrone God and to take him off his throne and the scripture of the psalmist in Psalm 2 comes to my mind why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing the the kings set themselves the rulers set themselves against the Lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder we don't want him to rule over us and the Lord that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh for, for he shall have them all in derision or confusion of face or a, an upheaval, a removal. This is where we are, friends. And we've got uh, an enemy, the great enemy of our soul that is in every generation. This, It's nothing new. In every generation, uh, a continual onslaught against the, the family of God, against the uh, kingdom of righteousness. So I had a few things hap happen to me this week. Um, uh, one was just straight out and straight out a uh, hammer of uh, <clears throat> that, that, that I'm a conspiracy theorist. And I, it kind of, it never surprised me because anybody today that speaks with any truth is considered by the dogs of humanity and the, the uh, illiterate in celestial matters or uh, bankrupt or dumb to speak the words of God. They're, they're considered as lunatics and whack jobs and, and conspiracy theorists. And so I, I want to encourage you today, if you're speaking the truth and immediately you're being censored or you speak the truth about a thing, or about a subject and you're immediately demonized and you speak about uh, some matter that is contrary to the narrative of the modern world and you're immediately character assassinated. That is a badge of honor. Speak the truth. Never, ever, ever go against it. When you have an opportunity to speak the truth, speak it with power and speak it with uh, a reverence unto the Lord. Speak it with uh, like you have, this is your last moment on earth. Speak it with that truth, because see, when, when the truth of God is spoken by a man or by a woman or even out of the mouths of babes, the Bible says, out of the mouths of, of babes thou perfectest praise. When children speak the truth and they're telling the truth, it is an absolute slam to the face and a kick to the face, a slap to the face against the tyrannical system that is, keeps spewing out unrighteousness. 
So speak it. Don't hesitate. Don't get that feeling of, oh, I'm not going to say something right now. They're bold to blaspheme and make hard speeches. So we must be bold to speak against their narrative of poison. So when a person comes and assassinates you or demonizes you for speaking the truth, and this is the problem, they're dealing with a research center of the dead. That's where they got their news. That's where they got their research. That's why they're speaking and parroting the words of unrighteousness. So whenever a man or a woman speaks out the truth, the immediately the only response that the wicked has is to cast that stumbling block of iniquity in their face and say, you're this, you're a Nazi. You're anti-Semitic. You're a racist. You, they pull this card. They pull this card. You are evil. You are a liar. You're a conspiracy theorist. No, that CT, that word, if you put the CT together, conspiracy theory. No, I'm a child of truth. I'm a child of truth. And so when truth speaks, the wicked hate it. So keep speaking it because the wicked hate it. Endeavor to speak the truth. Uh, and the individual said to me in this interesting way, he's like, and, and he even, he didn't even realize he was saying it. He's like, well, everybody's got to have some form of a foundation, some foundation or stead, uh, steadfast, unmovable thing that they stand on. You know, and he was saying it in his conversation, you got to have some, some place of, 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 of foundation. And I said, yes, it is God's word. And so, listen, I want to encourage you, children of God today, the children of righteousness. We have a foundation. If the foundations of God's word be destroyed, there's nothing left. So the reason these individuals, these loons, these imbeciles of society, and I will say that, oh, you're, you're demonizing them. No, I'm calling it what it is. These reprobates, according to truth, that have no understanding. See, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They live in that darkness. And so when light or truth is spoken, and listen, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So when you have a foundation or a basis of biblical truth, of God's solid word, and you speak it in a society of lunatics and sorcerers and magic shows and Hollywoodism and religiosity of the dead and dedication and devolution minds, and, and the, the list keeps going on and on and on. These aristocrats of evil, they're not the elite. They're deleted of God. They're not the, the, the progressive ones. They're the regressive, re, unregenerate ones. And they're portraying truth and light. And it is not light. It is, it's demonic. It's of the evil one. It's an unclean spirit. So speak against it. And don't ever, well, the, the man says to me, well, you have to have some form of foundation to go off. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying to him, is that pseudoscience? Is that Scientology? Is that science falsely so-called? Because if you don't have the doctrines and truth of God's word, you don't have anything. There's only one truth. There's only one way. He claimed it unto himself. None of these other guys did. From Confucius to uh, the uh, Muhammad to the Hindu gods to Siddhartha Gautama that didn't really know. Look at all of what they said after the, about, upon approaching their deathbed. I ain't got this figured out. I really don't know what I'm talking about. Even according to some of the writings of Darwinism, recanted. So Jesus Christ holds the way, the truth, and the life to death, and then after death, and then to the ascension of his glory and majesty before the Father. Why wouldn't you look to that? The most abhorrent, miserable lot of human beings is to reject the need of Christ. I don't need him. I got my own way. I got my own position. I got my own thing. I got my own work. I got my own finances. I'm good. I don't need you. Okay, that's a miserable lot because in your own heart and mind, you know you are miserable and your soul is lost and you are empty. I'm telling the truth about the soul's condition without Christ. That's what you have. And you can indulge it to death. You can fill it up with every filthy thing you want and it's still going to be empty because it needs Christ. So to encourage you today with this, don't shirk, don't shrink away or shirk your responsibility of speaking against this, this quote, man-made, good-looking model of evolution and this good-looking model of the system of relationships and abilities and schooling and 
and intelligence and and government systems. All these wicked things of men are bankrupt, man. And they don't produce anything. You don't want to, you want to see the best result of humanity in, in all their endeavors is the democratic, communist, socialist, totalitarian, despotic system of, of evil politics. That's what you got. You replace God and get rid of it and, and say devolution works and this theory of Darwinism works and atheism is comforting and all these wonderful things. Bull. They don't work. Look at Cuba after all these years of its demoralized, totalitarian, Marxist, socialist regime. It's a scumville. Would that they would overthrow that system. Would that we would stand up and overthrow it. And I'm going to tell you something. Unless you're doing something for it, the Bible teaches that the talk of the lips tendeth or lendeth or leadeth to nothing. Penury. Nothing. So we have to apply ourselves in our communities and, and you have to be bolder than a lion and speak the truth of God's word out and about to those around you that are still in their dim lit light of sectarianism and this dim lit light of humans reasoning and, and their will and their abilities. It's all done. It's over with. Outside of God's word, it's over with. It's vanity and vexation of spirit. I encourage you... To call it a, and this is what I'm going to jump back to. The man says, you are a conspiracy theorist. I can tell you're in all sorts of conspiracies. Well, a conspiracy, let me let me tell you this, is a, a desire conspiring to overthrow. Like Absalom tried to conspire and overthrow his father David, the king's kingdom. And to usurp himself into that position. That's what it is. And then a theory is without a fact. It's just a theory. It's just words. And so to say that you're a conspiracy theorist is that you're, you have a theory to overthrow the government or overthrow or conspire against. No, 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 no. That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't even make sense. See, God in his sovereignty through the blood of Jesus Christ purposed to overthrow the prince of darkness and when you stand on that foundation it is already done there's no such thing as a conspiracy there is what is done is god's finished work the devil tried to conspire against his his creator he influences mankind to build towers to heaven to dethrone God. He tries to influence your mind to that you sit on that throne. God doesn't. And he wants you to come with him into the slithering tongue of the vector spirit into the hell pit where I will go with you into everlasting chains of darkness. That's his doctrine. Reject God. Come with me. That's what Lucifer says. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. No, you won't. So if you want to talk about a conspiracy theory, see how they flip it? That's the wicked one. God's is a purpose, according to the election, to electing grace, and that shall stand. It ain't going to be thwarted. That shall stand. Not of men, but God's word. It doesn't matter what you say, what you think, what your theories are. It does not matter what your philosophy is, what your schooling is, what your degrees are, what your en endeavors are going to be. It doesn't matter what you're, who you're married to, how much your money is, how, what genealogy charts you follow, and how powerful your nation is. It just matters what God declares that shall stand. The rest of it is vanity and vanity and fluff and like cotton candy and like vapor. It goes bye-bye. The system of men is bye-bye. What stands is what God declares. You reap what you sow. What God's principles are, what his law is, what his order is, what his word is, what his holiness represents, who he is, that shall stand. The rest of it ain't going to happen. So be bold as a lion. Don't listen to these men tagging you with all these words counted as a badge of honor that you are standing upon the foundation of God, which standeth sure. Listen to me. The foundation of God standeth sure for the Lord knoweth them that are his and let every name or let every one that nameth the name of Jesus Christ depart from iniquity. What does that mean? Depart from iniquity means the forked tongue. It's two ways. 
It's going this way. I've said it before. Depart from iniquity. That just doesn't mean sin. Sin, all unrighteousness is sin. But when he says the word iniquity, it's the forked tongue. Depart from the crooked paths. Going left, right, up, down, all over. Come into the one true gate. Many are the ways, the broad way that leads to destruction. And many there be that go in there at. But narrow is the way into life. I want you to come into that today and speak it speak the truth live it desire it there is no other way so i'm at 15 minutes and 22 seconds i better stop this thing I kind of run off at the mouth a little bit but i have to because we're the days are evil and, and my time's clicking by your time's clicking by we need to stop this nonsense speak the truth in love remember jesus christ of nazareth is the light of the world and he's the hope of glory and he's the savior of the soul come to him before it's too late all right aloha everyone all right